I'm so excited to tell you guys today about this Series LLC. It's currently being used by over 2,000 real estate investors in all 50 states of the United States, and it is giving them the absolute best protection that money can buy at a fraction of the cost while streamlining their operations and streamlining their taxes. Guys, if you haven't heard about this Series LLC, I have to tell you about it. If you don't know me, my name is Scott Royal Smith. I am the owner of Royal Legal Solutions. We're a one-stop shop law firm that helps people from asset protection, estate planning, as well as streamlining their taxes. We have clients in all 50 states. We have over 2,000 clients. We have a staff of about 30 people at any given time, and we have been in business for over five years. And so through that history, we've learned that the Series LLC is the number one tool that should be being used by real estate investors, especially the single family home investor. And the reason why is because it provides you infinite scalability while streamlining all of your operations through one bank account one set of accounting records, and there's one entity to form and maintain. Now, a lot of people think, hey, I can't use the Series LLC. It, it's, the laws don't exist for me to form in my state. Great news. You can form the Series LLC in one state and use it in any other state. This is because of the full faith and credit of the Constitution, and we'll dive into that here a little bit later on. Some people also think, hey, this is an untested and therefore unreliable uh, type of asset protection strategy. But guess what? It's been around for over 20 years, and if anybody would have attacked it, they would have had a big payday if they could could have done so. However, there's nothing there for them to attack. The laws and the statutes that create the series LLC, you give it a very, very high level of protection. Again, it will be recognized in your state based upon the full faith and credit of the Constitution that your state is required to recognize the series LLC. And because it's been around for over 20 years, it, it has a good track record to make it something that is a seasoned vehicle that we can know how it will play out inside of the court system. And the best part is, guys, is that not everybody understands how to appropriately use a series LLC such that it would be held up if it were ever attacked. But the great news is, is that there's specialists like myself that do understand it. And we work every day with accountants, financing institutions, and the whole gamut that, of people that you touch as a real estate investor and have been doing that for over five years to streamline this process to make it a tool that you can use effectively for your asset protection. So guys, the top benefits here for using that series LLC is that you can form it in one state and use it in another. They have to recognize it based upon the full faith and credit of the Constitution in any state that you use it. And legally, it's treated just just as if you had multiple LLCs. But the best part is you get to create all of these LLCs for free and they don't cost you anything more to create them and they don't cost you anything to maintain them. And with over a 20 year history, you're gonna be able to have the confidence in knowing that if it's ever challenged, that it stands up. And I've actually had to defend these series LLCs in court and let me tell you, they hold up. There is absolutely a strong precedent for these series LLCs actually holding up when they're ever challenged, when they're properly formed and maintained by an experienced lawyer. And I have to tell you one of my favorite parts about the series LLC is that it can be created anonymously. That means that we can hold not all of your assets and all of your entities through anonymous structures. So that way if anybody ever looks to sue you, it looks like you qualify for food stamps. And there is no better way to stop a lawsuit than somebody looking at you and saying, this guy has nothing to go after, right? So that's what we try to accomplish. Stop the lawsuits before they ever start. Now the question that comes first is, do you need a series LLC? And we look at the bigger picture of asset protection, what we're looking for here is this, help, this uh, what we call is our freedom temple. And the freedom temple we look for is the wealth creation. First, you have to be making the money. Second, you have to be saving the money on from your taxes. That's the first thief that gets you on uh, and stop you on your way to financial freedom is all of the taxes. Next, we use the five pillars of asset protection. This is where the series LLC and other LLC and trust strategies come in. It's how do we hold assets anonymously? How do we protect ourselves from liability? How do we create separation, isolation, and appropriately use insurance in the right way uh, to be able to have the cost effective protection that gives us the best ability to be able to get rid of lawsuits so we pay little or nothing uh, if we're ever sued. We wanna become bulletproof to those lawsuits. And when we do this correctly, guys, what you're gonna find out is it's gonna streamline all of your operations. This is gonna save you time and help you leverage your time. It's gonna prepare you to have a seamless transition of those assets from you to your legacy and your family in the case uh, that you die. And when you have all of 
this taken care of and somebody that's watching your back to make sure it's done correctly for you, you're gonna be sleeping easier at night and this is gonna give you that ability to have that higher personal fulfillment that you've been looking for in life. So there's three types of protection that we look for for LLCs and a series LLC is part of that protection. The first thing we're looking for is how do you protect yourself and your credit score from ever being sued, right? And what we use for that is we use a traditional LLC. We're gonna form that in the state uh, wherever you're located and it's gonna do all of the active business there, like signing contracts, hiring contractors, and, and engaging in those day-to-day -day business activities. You don't wanna do that in your personal name because your personal name is connected to your credit score. So if people sue you because part of the business deal that you're working on with them goes wrong, what's gonna happen is it's gonna damage your credit score. So you need that traditional LLC to protect your credit score. Additionally, that traditional LLC lets you have additional business write-offs as well as being able to save money on taxes. If you choose to have it taxed as an S corporation, you can save that 15.3% on your self-employment tax just by using this one strategy alone while being able to have the increased levels of protection from uh, from the LLC and to protect your credit score, right? So not only does it help protect you, but it also pays for itself in tax savings. Next thing we look for is how to protect your soft assets. When we're using a series LLC to do that, we either hold the soft assets and the parent uh, entity or one of the child entities of the series LLC, and we can create that with anonymity in place, and it can hold all of your cash or stocks, anything that doesn't have per an individual liability attached to it. Um, an individual, uh, individual liability is, is attached to something, Thing, that's where we start to consider it a hard asset. So th here, think about like people can get hurt on your property or your boat, or people can get defrauded based upon your website or something like that, right? All of those things we consider, hey, that's a hard asset. They can't sue just my cash in my bank account. It, my cash in my bank account didn't do anything. Okay, that's a soft asset. But what they could do is sue me because of something I said online um, on my website or my boat, uh, wrecked into somebody, or somebody got hurt on my piece of real estate. That's gonna be our hard asset there. So when do you need to get a series LLC? Well, first of all, you don't need an LLC at all. If you have no assets, you have no business activities, you have poor credit and you're not looking to improve your credit. If that's the situation you're in, don't spend your money on an LLC, it's not gonna help you. If you're looking though to protect your credit and build business credit so that way you can have a credit line and your independent business can have a credit line and you wanna save money on taxes or you're otherwise doing anything that has risk associated with it like entering into contracts or collecting rents, this is when you're gonna need that traditional LLC. And guys, if you're wondering about like, well, I'm not not doing enough now to say that maybe I don't need a traditional LLC, I can get away with it for a while. It's the wrong way to think about it. Number one, rich people build the systems for scale. It's about building the foundation. It's a way that you operate that makes you rich, not just like some clever idea that you come up with. And number two, that the creating the LLC now starts the seasoning of the LLC. It needs two years for you to build the business credit of that LLC for it to get independent financing separate from you. So if you buy the LLC, now, even if you're not going to do much of anything with it, it's still getting that seasoning, which is going to allow you to be, have that extra credit line in the future, which gives you more capital. So that way, when you're ready to act, you can move faster and stronger in the direction uh, that you want to go to. The last thing here is the series LLC. You use this for holding uh, all of your assets. You use this to hold all of your cash, your stocks. You use it to isolate uh, every single hard asset that you own, like your individual piece of real estate, uh, your boat, etc. And this prevents it, says, if there's ever a lawsuit against one of your assets, right, one of your individual pieces of real estate, they can't go after any of the other assets. And that's the beauty of the compartmentalization that the series LLC offers. So let's talk about our asset holding, guys. So the asset holding company owns everything, but it doesn't do anything. As you can see here, there's three major pieces to the asset holding companies that are typical. One is a hub and spoke model of traditional LLCs. This is what you're gonna find as like the old method of doing uh, asset protection. It's been around for about 40 years. What you essentially do is you have one asset and, and an individual LLC, and then all of those LLCs are all owned by one mothership LLC at the top. Um, and then what that allows you to do is to be able to accomplish exactly the same thing as a series LLC, but you've paid a lot more money to be able to accomplish that. Now, and the third thing that we have here is what's called a Delaware Statutory Trust, which operates just like a series LLC does, except for the fact that it's a trust, which comes into place to help us save money on taxes, especially franchise taxes for the California investor. So the hub and spoke model is a really great model, um, except for the fact that it's just more expensive than it, than it needs to be. It's the most, uh, has the most likely 
legacy. This is the one that's most attorneys are most familiar with, uh, but it's like the old technology. The new technology is the series LLC or the Delaware Statutory Trust um, that allows you to be able to have that infinite scalability at no additional cost, as well as to be able to incorporate uh, all of the anonymity into it without having to pay for all of the maintenance and all of the setup of all of these individual entities like you have to do with the hub and spoke model. Now, when we look at the ultimate security, we're looking for the series LLC because it is, it is the most cutting edge tool on the market for real estate investors. What we're looking for is inside the five pillars of asset protection. And this is where we start getting control over our liability as well as control over our isolation. So what we're looking for here is to be able to uh, ensure that we are separating all of our soft assets from our hard assets. Um, so that way uh, we know that if there's ever a lawsuit, we're going to lose as little as possible. And I got to say, from my personal experience, uh, I've actually had success with defending these uh, lawsuits with inside of this structure uh, and being able to get the lawsuits completely dismissed just because of the power of the structure. Regardless of the law, regardless of the facts, the structure itself gives us a lot of power to just get the lawsuits dismissed. So the basics of the series LLC, you probably re heard me reference this a little bit earlier. There's one parent here that's filed with the state. This is where we have one bank account, one set of accounting records, one EIN number, and then this parent uh, that's filed with the state, it alone can create all of these individual child series. And it can, you can create these child series essentially on your desktop. There's no additional filing requirement for them. You just have to create and sign the paperwork to be able to create that series, that child series. And as you can see, each child series owns one group. So all, child series A here is holding all of the soft assets, the cash, stocks, etc. Child series B here, owning an investment property. Child series C here, owning a syndication investment. Some people even like to compartmentalize their syndication investments because they say, hey, I know it's a long shot as a limited partner in another LLC um, that I'm ever going to have it blow back on me. But hey, you know what? I'm going to compartmentalize that because I don't even want that risk. And by the way, it doesn't cost me anything extra to be able to protect myself from that risk. So why don't I go ahead and do it? And here's the hot tip about the series LLC, because there's a lot of states that you can form them in. I think there's over 13 right now, but you want to form it either in Delaware, Nevada, Texas, or Wyoming, because those ha states have the strongest charging order protection. And from there, you can use it in any state. And I, a, hot, a, a double hot tip on this is if you form it in Texas, you have the strong charging order protection, but what you also end up with is with zero yearly fees. And this can save you a little bit of money. Uh, I every single year and help that ROI just a little bit. We like the series LLC because we believe it is a way to build smarter. So here we still have the series LLC that's formed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna form the series LLC using anonymous trust. What this allows us to do is to mask the ownership of the entity so that your name doesn't appear on the entity records. Somebody goes to sue you, it doesn't look like you even own an entity. And most they're gonna be able to see is that there's an anonymous trust that owns this LLC and all of the legal paperwork all ties back to a law firm and a lawyer, which all of that information is in turn protected by the attorney client privilege and when you create the series LLC this way it's also lets you create your child series which you can combine with land trusts to be able to own the assets anonymously as well which has a number of other benefits we're going to touch on here in a moment of how to use as a land trust for your real estate remember when we're when we're using anything else besides real estate we don't necessarily need to use land trust but when we're using real estate we want to make sure that public record doesn't reflect you and it doesn't reflect that this uh, and this land trust is associated with a series LLC or the assets are associated with a series LLC. We want for liability purposes to make it look like every asset is individual, completely standalone, because that's how you shrink the pool of money down that they think they might be able to go after at the outset of the lawsuit, because what we're trying to do is get them to not file the lawsuit by having anonymity and having the compartmentalization of each asset. They think, hey, there's not a money here. We're just not gonna go proceed with a lawsuit at all. So the series LLC is safe to use, right? If it could have been attacked by now, it would have been attacked by now. It's because it's been around for over 20 years. We know that the full faith and credit of the constitution means that we can form it in one state and it's gonna be recognized and defensible in another state. We know that's the exact same legal concepts and the exact same legal structuring uh, and exactly the way the statutes are written, give it the exact same protections as if you had multiple LLCs, just like the hub and spoke model that we talked about earlier. And it's just like a traditional LLC 
policy formed in Delaware being used everywhere else in the United States. This is the same precedent that's used for a series LLC being formed in Texas, Delaware, Nevada, or Wyoming, where it has strong charging order protection and then being used anywhere else in the country. And best of all, guys, this streamlines all of your operations. So you can still do everything out of one bank account, one set of accounting records uh, with one EIN number. The only thing you have to do is make sure that inside of your accounting records, you keep track of what income and what expense goes to which property, which is a very simple tagging or categorization uh, inside of your QuickBooks or inside of your Excel spreadsheet, whatever way you uh, want to do that. But you can maintain all the operations through the one set of accounting books, one EIN number, uh, and one tax return. Okay, so beyond the series LLC, there's a couple of things that you can do here. You can run uh, your active operations through a shell company using that traditional LLC. This is what allows you to separate yourself from any of the active business operations and protect your credit. It's like a decoy company, right? It gets them to file the lawsuit against that entity that they did business with that doesn't own anything, which is what we want, right? Because our worst case scenario there is we wind down that LLC and we start up a new one, but we got rid of that loss. And this is a way you can minimize your risk from the lawsuits. It creates the separation, and that's really the biggest piece here, is that the separation is what you're looking for. The asset holding company here is the agent trust and the entity. This is the series LLC, and it's completely separate here from this shell LLC, which is your operating company. The shell company doesn't own anything, but it does everything on your behalf. Now, we're going to add anonymity um, to the series LLC and to the operating LLC in most cases. And we're using an, an conjunction with land trust to have uh, anonymity in the ownership of the assets themselves. So that way, whether people are looking at the Secretary of State records to be able to find out, hey, what entities does this person own? Or if they're searching the uh, county rolls or other deed records to find out what they own, everything gets stopped by these anonymous trusts, which they can't pierce because all of the information ties back to a law firm and it's therefore all protected by the attorney-client privilege uh, by using something that's called a nominee trustee service, which is done by lawyers to be able to put their names on the public records as a nominee uh, of that entity uh, and therefore that the client doesn't have to put their name on the public record. So this is the way, guys, if you want to become invisible. At that kind of level of privacy is important to you, this is the way um, that you go about it. You end up having your entity here that is you end up being a, a member managed uh, LLC that is in turn owned by an agent trust. And that agent trust, of course, has you being the ultimate owner. But because this agent trust is a private document, nobody can know that unless you disclose it to them. So if you need to qualify for financing or otherwise you need to prove the ownership of your entity structure, what you do is you produce the paperwork as well as your accounting records and therefore you've proven the ownership control and the income uh, from the entities and all of your business operations stay exactly the same except for the fact that if anybody tries to look at you from the outside that you didn't disclose to they can't find out anything about you the reason this prevents lawsuits is because nobody sues beggars and also it looks like that this only has one asset and that is isolated underneath each individual land trust. They can't tie it back into any bigger structure. So at the outset of this thing, they're thinking, God, there's nothing here to really go after. But let's say they go ahead and try to ensue anyway, even though there's not much here. What they find out is the limit of their recovery is stopped right here by this individual uh individual LLC, or if it was a series LLC, this would be a child series uh, of that series LLC. Now, I wanna show you guys a little bit about what this complete package looks like. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on in here, but I wanna just blow your mind a little bit about the, the structure uh, that is repeatable and scalable that every single sophisticated real estate investor uses. The first thing I look for is the scalable asset holding company where the, uh, the asset holding company is itself anonymous. That's what reflected here, typically using a series LLC. And underneath here is where you have the child series and land trust with their corresponding properties. And and every time you get a new property, you just simply create uh, a new child series and land trust and then deed the property uh, underneath that land trust. The whole asset holding company is in turn owned by the living trust, which is your estate planning document that says, when I die, all of these, these companies here, my asset holding company, as well as my operating company, passes to my children or to uh, my charity of choice or whatever the case may be. Additionally, you have your operating company here, which is that traditional LLC. 
and we can create that traditional LLC along with some anonymity here, uh, so that way people can't even find out that this is actually your operating company. And underneath that traditional LLC, you're going to be able to save additional money on taxes besides that S-Corporation tax selection that we talked about earlier. You're also gonna be able to use different types of retirement accounts, like a self-directed IRA or a solo 401k to save you additional money off your taxes. Now, if you're a high net worth individual, uh, typically with two to three million or more in total net worth, we highly recommend incorporating an offshore trust, uh, typically formed uh, as a bridge trust or a fully offshore trust to ensure that you have that ultimate protection that says, even if the worst case scenario happens and I have an activist judge and that judge does all kinds of crazy stuff that's completely illegal, fine. In that scenario, I'm just gonna go ahead and take my assets offshore so that way I don't lose it here to this abusive uh, legal system. Now that's exceedingly rare, but when you have enough net worth, it makes sense to buy this quote unquote insurance policy of being able to go offshore. And lastly, this is the last part of your estate plan where you have uh, your powers of attorney uh, and your healthcare power of attorney that allow people to be able to help you in case you're ever injured, but you can't make those financial decisions. You can't sign documents. Um, you can't make your own healthcare decisions. This is where that planning uh, takes place uh, for you. And that's the, that's the full diagram of how the asset protection, the tax, and the estate planning all link together graphically. So here's a quick owner's manual, guys, on how to use the land trust. Now, when you're using uh, the land trust, you can do a couple of different things to be able to accomplish anonymity. So one thing you can do is you can just go ahead and use the land trust uh, to be able to use the anonymity, but you're not gonna use have any other protection with it. And that would be as if you just had a land trust uh, there in place. There's other ways that you can uh, uh, create anonymity uh, as well as being able to create a series LLC. And one way to do that is to use Wyoming. So Wyoming's best uh, if you want that built-in anonymity that's there right when you create uh, the LLC itself. So what you're gonna want, what you're gonna have though with that is uh, a, a really strong assurance of. Uh, what are gonna be those annual costs to Wyoming? Wyoming doesn't have a corporate tax, but it does have yearly fees associated with that. So there's a little bit of cost um, associated with having that uh, Wyoming LLC. Now you're gonna wanna use Texas. Um, Texas doesn't have any annual fees. We can use the land trust in conjunction with the Texas series LLC to accomplish the anonymity just the same as we would do with Wyoming. Um, and Texas has some of the strongest protections, charging order protections on par with Wyoming, uh, but there's no annual fees associated with it. Now the one drawback to Texas is if it's making over a million dollars annually, um, I think it's 1.1 million now, this number always changes, Changes, then it's subject to a corporate tax. So if you're making large amounts of money uh, through the entity, uh, then you would want to form inside of Wyoming and pay that extra state fee because you'd be saving on the franchise tax. So there's a little bit of consideration of uh, what, enti what entity choice to do that depends upon the income and amounts. And then you might want to use um, <clears throat> a local state, um, if your local state happens to have the right uh, series structure as well as the right laws uh, to be able to protect that structure um, if it were ever sued, right? And we're looking for strong charging order protection. And this could be coming about more and more um, as state laws change. And we stay on top of all of that to make sure that all the recommendations that we give to our clients are uh, always up to date. So when we look at uh, a non-series structure is what we're looking at here, we're going to be looking at um, just an LLC structure. And here's where we have the hub and spoke model of an LLC. So you'd have uh, one LLC that's typically formed here in Wyoming, which is a manager, typically a manager managed um, LLC. And then you have all of these individual LLCs that are formed in the state where the asset's located. And these are all member managed. And they in turn own the property through a land trust and have this individual property. This is the most time-tested uh, type of uh, protection. Uh, this is the most sophisticated, but also uh, the oldest uh, type, where you end up having increased expenses because you have all these individual LLCs now. Um, so that's the drawback to it. Um, but you have the longevity of this being a uh, a, a very known model, so to speak. Um, and we're also able to uh, use this model just like the series LLC to be able to move the assets in uh, because of this act right here, guys, the St. Germain Act, which says that when you transfer a property, a one to four unit property into a land trust, uh, that they cannot call 
default the due on sale clause, right? So they can't accelerate the mortgage. So if you have your existing mortgage in place, um, however it's held, and your personal name are inside of an LLC, when you want to transfer it to a land trust, they can't call that note due. Over the last five years, we've had zero problems uh, transferring the assets uh, be based because of the St. Germain Act when we're moving things into this kind of structure. Right, when you wanna protect assets, guys, and again, we're, we're switching back here to the series LLC, right? Because it functions just like the hub and spoke model, but the series LLC is 99% of the time the, uh, the way that we wanna go. Whenever you acquire a new property, you're just gonna acquire it um, and um, acquire that property in whatever way that you typically do. To almost always this is gonna be in your personal name, and then we're gonna move it into the land trust after the fact. You can hold um, cash and stocks up here in the parent, or you can create an individual child series and hold those cash uh, and stocks here. And for syndication investors, you can decide whether you wanna hold all the syndications underneath one individual child series, or we can separate out the individual syndication investments um, or limited partnership investments and their individual um, child series. Either way, we're Works. The only uh, real nuance that really applies in this situation is what happens when you're acquiring new property or refinancing property, and that always happens uh, outside of the entity and you set your personal name, and then we move it into the entity after the fact. It's just, the only drawback here to the Series LLC is that the financing inside of a Series LLC is possible, except for the fact that they're going to want to do a full underwriting of the entire entity structure, and then you have to pay their attorneys to do that. And so we almost say, you know, let's just not go through all of that other hassle. Let's just do whatever we need to do to get through underwriting as quickly as possible, and then we'll clean it up after the fact. It's always faster uh, and more cost effective to do it that way. Again, guys, buying new property, um, same type of thing. We're not worried about the due on sale clause uh, because of the transfer to the land trust and the St. Germain Act says that we can do this. We're gonna use a warranty deed to transfer this asset to preserve the title insurance uh, on the property. Um, and that they will see on the public records, if anybody looks, that hey, you know, you used to own this piece of property, but key point here, you don't actually own it anymore. It's actually owned by the land trust and the child series. So if they guess that you own the property, they actually guess wrong because you aren't actually the owner anymore. When you want to sell the property, you can either sell the property just directly out of the land trust to the third party, or sometimes the title company will want you to transfer it from the land trust to your personal name and from your personal name uh, to the third party. Uh, and the reason why is because this can just make it easier for their underwriting because they say, hey, well, it, when we look at the chain of title, it, transferring it from your name to another third party, that's really common for us. Once we're trying to transfer it from a trust to a third party, that's not so common for us. So it gives us uh, a little bit of heartburn in some circumstances that is, uh, but almost all the time we can just sell the property directly out of the trust and the title companies are fine with it. But if we ever run into a scenario where we have an issue with that, what we do is we just transfer the asset to the personal name and sell it out of your personal name. Uh, back into to the third party. And one a key point here, guys, with all of the entity structures that we're working with here, these all qualify for your 1031 exchanges. So if you're anything that you can do as a real estate investor and make money doing real estate, all of those options are still available to you uh, as when using these structures. So it does not inhibit your ability uh, to do business. When we're looking at refinancing, again, we're gonna do the refinancing always outside of uh, outside of the entity structure because we don't want to have to pay the bank to have to go do this elaborate underwriting process. So what we do is we simply deed the property out, refinance it, and deed it back in. Now, I want to highlight one piece here is that if you're going to be using conforming loans, there's a six-month seasoning requirement when doing the refinancing. So what we always say is, hey, let's refinance these properties, pull the cash out, and then tuck them into the industry structure, or just be very strategic about when we're going to do refinancing. We also make it very cost-effective when doing this deeding in and out uh, because we already will have done the bulk of the work moving the asset in the first time. So all we have to do is some quick paperwork changes uh, and then we're able to accomplish that uh, movement of the property in a very, very efficient, uh, both in cost as well as time. Now paying taxes, guys, <clears throat> is super easy with this. Paying taxes is so easy. You just take all of the tax that you would typically have from your 
um, from your passive income, all that's gonna be reported typically on your personal return on your Schedule E. If you have active income from doing flipping or Airbnbs, that's gonna be on your Schedule C of your personal return. If you're a married couple, you're just gonna be doing that in the same in a, in a community property state. It's the same thing as being an individual. It's still gonna be one big disregarded entity uh, for all of your tax reporting purposes. If, you're, uh, if you have unmarried partners or you're a married couple in a separate property state, it's gonna be those issues issuing of K-1s and filing a partnership return uh, for that LLC. So there's nothing special that happens here with the returns. It's just as if you had a single LLC that owned everything, except for the fact that you get all of the benefits of having all of this anonymity and compartmentalization, et cetera, that kind of runs in the background. And it just runs in the background of your life, but it doesn't cost you any more money and it doesn't complicate anything for your taxes or any other part of your life. So this is just a diagram to show you um, how the money, uh, how the flow works is that you'd have that series LLC, you have the child series, the trust and the asset. The asset ends up paying rent, the rent gets paid uh, to the series LLC. The series LLC then pays uh, the owners and files that partnership return uh, if required to do so. If you're um, if you're single or, or married, it's gonna work in the exact same way. And it doesn't matter for this piece if there's a property management company um, that comes in the way here, it'll just flow through the property management company back to your entity here, which holds all the cash, and then it eventually distributes that uh, to the individuals. So, and, and when you're using it as like a pass-through entity or you have the partnership return, um, it doesn't uh, really matter. The structure is, is all the same and they're gonna look at this and treat this just as if it were a single LLC, single traditional LLC um, that has uh, all of these assets inside of it. Great. Um, so a lot of people have uh, a lot of the same questions and we, this is our FAQ on that. And a lot of people think like, I'm, am I too small to need a series LLC? And I have to tell you that it's the savvy investors that start with the end in mind. So you have to imagine what is the next 20 years of my building of wealth going to look like? And you're gonna see inside of that vision that it's gonna be multiple different types of assets and you're gonna be scaling a portfolio of assets. And that's why we think it's important to start with a series LLC because that's Going to be the entity that you're going to be growing into right so let's start with the end in mind have one system that we use now for the rest of our lives so when we never have to get you know we're not having to change course five years from now because any changes later on requires expensive cleanup as well as being very cumbersome and time consuming now another question we get is will my cpa understand what to do and as i said before guys this is the same as having just a single traditional llc that owns everything so your cpa if they know how to handle that they're going to know exactly what to do with the series llc in combination with these revocable trusts that are all treated as disregarded or passed through entities for tax purposes now other people are saying well i don't necessarily want to learn how to do a bunch of complicated accounting software do i have to do that and the answer is no you don't have to a lot of our clients use quick to be able to do their accounting, but there's no legal requirement that you use software for that. You can just use an Excel spreadsheet or anything that you feel comfortable with uh, that appropriately tracks the income and expenses uh, for each of your individual entities or child series of your series LLC. And, and lastly, people are saying, man, Scott, this sounds like the most amazing thing. Why aren't more people doing it? And the reason why I think is because there's very few people that specialize in the and the exact benefits and structures that really help real estate investors. And that's a series LLC. It doesn't really help people unless they have multiple assets, unless they need that level of compartmentalization. And most people don't, but real estate investors or business owners really, really do. And so that's where we think um, that as as the series LLC picks up more and more steam and, and have, there's more and more states that are passing laws that allow the series LLC, um, you will see that more professionals are going to start picking this up. But the reason that you haven't heard about it is because there aren't the other professionals out there that specialize in the same area uh, that we do at Royal Legal Solutions. And we are educated on, and are very happy to educate other professionals on the benefits of the series LLC. How does it work for anything that you do like preparing and filing your taxes or anything in the gambit? Our mission is is to be able to help as many real estate investors as possible and to educate other professionals about how they can help their clients even more. So if you liked what you heard here today, the best thing to do, guys, is to go to royallegalsolutions.com and take the quiz. That's at royallegalsolutions.com slash 
quiz. And what that's gonna give you is the page that's gonna give you our intake quiz to be able to start uh, providing us the information so that we can start uh, knowing who you are, what are you going after, what's the situation that you're in currently, and what is the content information that we have that's gonna be most beneficial for you so that way we can see if we're a good fit to be able to help you get to where uh, you want to go and I have to tell you guys that this is the number one thing to do it's to go to royallegalsolutions.com slash quiz right now and start filling out that quiz because at the moment that you're able to start providing us some more information about you the more we're going to be able to curate the information that we know that's helped people just like you and we're going to do all of that without you ever giving us a dollar and if it makes sense for us to form a deeper relationship, fantastic. But in the meantime, I would love to share with you more about the information that we've put together that's specifically designed for people that are in your exact situation. Again, guys, my name is Scott Royal Smith. I'm the owner of Royal Legal Solutions, and I want to thank you uh, for joining me here today. And I encourage you to go to royallegalsolutions.com quiz and fill out that quiz right now.